My name is Tiffany. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If only one person views this video, I hope that it's that one out there that is seeking and searching. Maybe because you are feeling broken, you're feeling an emptiness, you're feeling a void, you feel rejected, you just feel unloved, you don't even know what you're looking for. I hope that you are the one that comes across this video. <laughs> My purpose for sharing this is as, as a hope and encouragement to share the good news, to share our creators, his, his love and his goodness. And um, I'm not a teacher. I'm not always the best with words, but I would like to plant some good seed. So I'm going to get started with the woman at the well and how we can ask those questions or, or ponder questions to ask in our lives and the decisions that we make and how they lead to certain outcomes. I'm going to start in Yochanan, which is John 4, 3 through 42. He left Yehuda and went away again to Galil, and he had to pass through Shomeron. So he came to a city of Shomeron called Shechem, near the piece of land Yaakov gave to his son Yosef. And Yaakov's fountain was there. So Yehusha being wearied, now Yehusha is our Messiah. You will hear some people pronounce it Yahshua or Yeshua. How we understand it is Yahusha. So don't be alarmed. <laughs> Yahusha. Yahusha being wearied from the journey was sitting there at the fountain. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Shomron came to draw water. Yahusha said to her, give me to drink. For his taught ones had gone off into the city to buy food. The woman of Shomron therefore said to him, how is it that you, being a Yahudi, which you may commonly hear as the word Jew, Yahudi, ask a drink from me, a woman of Shomeron, or Samaria. For Yahudim do not associate with Shomeronites. Yahusha answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of Elohim, and who it is, that says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Aduni, or Master, you have no vessel, and the well is deep. From where then do you have living water? Are you greater than our father Yaakov, who gave us the well and drink from it himself and his sons and his stock? Yehusha answered and said to her, Everyone drinking of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I give him shall certainly never thirst. And the water that I give him shall become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting high, just everlasting eternal life. The woman said to him, Aduni, our master, give me this water so that I do not thirst nor come here to draw. Yahushua said to her, go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yahushua said to her, you have said, well, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Aduni, master, I see that you are a Nabi, or a prophet. Our, our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Yerushalayim, which is commonly referred to as Jerusalem, is the place where one needs to worship. Yehusha said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you shall neither on this mountain nor in Yerushalayim worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know because the deliverance is of the Yahudim. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth in Ruach and in Emet, spirit and truth. For the Father also seeks such to worship Him. Elohim is Ruach, is Spirit, and those who worship Him need to worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Mashiach, 
Messiah is coming, the one who is called anointed. When that one comes, he shall announce to us all. Yahushua said to her, I, who am speaking to you, am he. And upon this, his Talmudim, his taught ones came, and they were marveling that he was speaking with a woman. However, no one said, what do you seek? Or why do you speak with her? For a moment, let's think of when you uh, are thirsting, you, you're drinking of, you're taking in, and you're consuming. The woman then left her water jug and went away to the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all that I have done. Is this not how my she act? So she had came for water, but receiving pure water, she forgot all about her jug, her empty vessel that she brought. And she immediately, she went out and she was planting seed. She was so excited that she went out and she just started telling everybody about it, right? They went out of the city and were coming to him. But in the meantime, his taught ones, his Talmudim were asking him, saying, Rabbi, eat. And he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Then the Talmudim, the tall ones, said to each other, Did anyone bring him to eat? Yahushua said to him, My food is to do the desire of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are still four months and the harvest comes? See, I say to you, lift up your eyes and see the fields, for they are white for harvest already. So we see that. There was seeds being planted. There was water being given. And now we have something growing, right? The harvesting, the, the sowing the seed and the reaping. <laughs> he who is reaping receives reward and gathers fruit for everlasting high, eternal life. So that both he who is sowing and he who is reaping rejoice together. For in this, the word is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. So Yahusha was planting the seed with the woman. And then the woman went and planted the seed with the others. And then just look at what it's growing into. And many of the Shomeronites of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who witnessed. He told me all that I have done. Therefore, when the Shomeronites came to him, they were asking him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard. And we know that this is truly Hamashiach, the Savior of the world. Spiritually, this could represent adultery, idolatry, coveting, never being satisfied. She was seeking all the things to fill the emptiness of her heart her innermost being, but wasn't seeking Yahuwah with all her heart and all the other things came first. No matter what you've done in your life that causes you to believe that you are not worthy of this beautiful gift, plan of redemption, or salvation is a lie and a deception from the evil spirits that want to keep you enslaved and in bondage. We are all unworthy in ourselves. Do you find yourself always looking for the next best thing to fill that empty void inside of you? Have you made decisions only to find yourself later regretting those decisions? Making decisions in the flesh can cause anxiety, feelings of being overwhelmed, feelings of regret. So we have this conscious, right, that tells us, um, that gives us these feelings. When we are washed by his word, his truth, when we're guarded and suited up in his truth, and by spending time with him in his word, seeking him with everything in us, letting it saturate our hearts and our minds, our innermost being. We can then be able to make better decisions when we let him lead our life, our path, our walk. Yahusha, from the, the right hand of Yahuwah, offers the solution that will fill that empty void, that darkness, that emptiness that you feel. He is the true light. He is the living water, pure, satisfying, fulfilling, and giving true shalom. 
We have all transgressed against him. Romans 3, 9 through 4, 8. What then? Are we better? Not at all, for we have previously accused both Yahudim and Yahwanites that they are all under sin. As it has been written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is no one who is understanding. There is none who is seeking Elohim. They have all turned aside. They have together become worthless. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have deceived. The poison of adders is their lips, whose mouth is filled with cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, to ruin and wretchedness are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no reverence of Elohim before their eyes, and we know that whatever the Torah says, it says to those who are in the Torah, so that every mouth might be stopped, and all the world come under judgment before Elohim. Therefore, by works of Torah, no flesh shall be declared right before him, for by the Torah is the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the Torah, a righteousness of Elohim has been revealed, being witnessed by the Torah and the Nebaim, prophets. And the righteousness of Elohim is through belief in Yahushua HaMashiach, to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For we have all sinned and fall short of the esteem of Elohim, being declared right without pain by his favor through the redemption which is in Mashiach Yahushua, whom Elohim put forth as an atonement through belief in his blood, to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his tolerance, Elohim had passed over the sins that had taken place before, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, and that he is righteous and declares righteous the one who has belief in Yahushua. Where then is the boasting? It is shut out. By what Torah? Of works? No, but by the Torah of belief. For we reckon that a man is declared right by belief without works of Torah, or is he the Elohim of the Yahudim only, and not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, since it is one Elohim who shall declare right the circumcised by belief, and the uncircumcised through belief. Do we then nullify the Torah through the belief? Let it not be. On the contrary, we establish the Torah. What then shall we say, Abraham our father, to have found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was declared right by works, he has boasting, but not before Elohim. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed Yahuwah, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. And to him who is working, the reward is not reckoned as a favor, but as a debt. And to him who is not working, but believes on him who is declaring right the wicked, his belief is reckoned for righteousness. Even as David also says of the Barakah, the blessings of the man up to whom Elohim reckons, righteousness without works, Baruch, blessed are those whose lawlessness are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Baruch is the man to whom Yahuwah shall by no means reckon sin. There are some states of emotion that we have, which can cause us to make bad decisions, and our decisions affect our lives, and also those around us. We think of some emotions, such as sad, lonely, hungry, the letters S-L-H. I think of the word Selah. It's said to be an expression to stop and think about what you just read, or to pause. And many of David's writings in Tehillim, or what you know as Psalms, Selah is at the end of a sentence. It is spelled in Hebrew, Samik, Lamed, He, those are the letters. And they all have meanings. Psalm 3, 2 through 4. Many are saying of me, there is no deliverance for him in Elohim, Selah. But you, O Yahuwah, are a shield for me, my esteem, and the one lifting my head up. I cried to Yahuwah with my voice, and he heard me from his Kodesh mountain. Selah. 4. 
verse 2 through 4. Answer me when I call, O Elohim of my righteousness. You gave relief to me when I was in distress, like a, a state of being and emotion. Show favor to me and hear my prayer. To when, you sons of man, would you turn my esteem to shame? Would you love emptiness, seek falsehood? Selah. But know that Yahuwah has separated a kind one for himself. Yahuwah hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. Speak within your heart, on your bid, and be still. Selah. 32.5 I acknowledged my sin to you and my wickedness. I did not hide. I have said, I confess my transgressions to Yahuwah. And you forgave the wickedness of my chata, which is to miss the mark, a path, a trespass, iniquity, or evil. Selah. Habakkuk 3.13 You shall go forth to save your people, Yesha. To save, Yesha, your anointed, Mashiach. You shall smite the head from the house of the wicked, by laying bare from foundation to neck. Selah. Those words, or that word, those letters, Samik, Lamed, Hey. Thinking about leaning upon the shepherd that, that shepherds your being, your spirit, or through his spirit. I encourage you to read Matthew 6, 5 through 13, and pause. Pour your heart to him in your secret place. We must realize that we need help and that we can't do this on our own and that nothing is going to fill us. We must shub, teshuba, to return. The way Yahuwah Elohim created us to be, to turn away from disobedience and change our mindset, to spend time in his word seeking him and asking him for guidance, instruction, wisdom, discernment to understand, to perceive what he is saying, discipline and courage to go out and share with others the gift that he is giving to us and to bear good fruit. Most importantly, in everything we do, we are to do it with pure love or to love others. I hope this message was an encouragement to you and that it causes you to just start your journey seeking him for he is the only thing that can fill that emptiness inside of you. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>